folks. Tonight's program brought to you by Turlow's Miso's Triangles. Miso's Triangles, crunchy even in a big shipwreck on Sarn. That's right, the Breakfast of Exiles. And if you act now, you'll get a free dark Black Guardian communicator inside. That's right. Sell your soul to the Dark One. And be, oh, that's right. You have to kill the doctor and you might get to get the TARDIS and stuff. But eat Turlow's Miso's Triangles. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, folks. Dr. Freedom here with you. To time for some Dr. News. Well, it's night now here. Oh, uh, yeah. A little bit of weirdness going on out there in the Whovian community again. Uh, somebody once again has stirred up the spring rumor. I like that. Could there be a spring special? That's what they're calling it now rather than an Easter special. And the thing is, they don't realize they've got a lot of people seem to think, well, they've reduced the amount of episodes. That means they can film an Easter special, right? No. For one, the only reason you're getting a Christmas special this year is because Chibnall said he was not going to do a one-off with his new doctor, you know, and then wait till next year for the whole season to premiere. Yet suddenly somebody's got it zonked into their head. There's going to be an Easter special. No, there is not. Now, there's other folks out there going, why don't they do this? Why don't they do that? The BBC doesn't want to. That's the problem. When you had fans demanding a Paul McGann series. No, we can't have more than one doctor on the air. It would be too confusing. And that's how it goes. It literally does. And people are like, what? well, if we've got William Bradley and that gang on board to do big finish audios, why couldn't they have recreated some of the lost episodes and stuff like that? I, got, I said, sorry, that's just the, B, the way the BBC is. They're not going to budget the money on it. They aren't going to take the gamble. And also, one other thing is the fact that someone goes, don't don't pick on fans, you know, about their opinions and all that. We have ours because, especially because they're worried about the future of Doctor Who. And <laughs> I'm like, it's funny how y'all got worried about the future of Doctor Who when they revealed that the next Doctor wasn't going to have a penis. I'm sorry. Don't feed me that sad, sorry excuse. It's going to kill the show and all this other crap. I will not buy it. It's called Get Over Your Own Shortcomings and just accept it. And rather than go, I'm not watching Doctor Who's Dead, why don't you try supporting the show or at least having an open enough mind to give it a shot before you prejudge it? And by the way, the fancy word for prejudge is prejudice. So I'm sorry. A lot of people don't like the fact I'm saying that, but sit down and honestly think about it. Now, a lot of people were on me because I was like, well, look, about the Ghostbusters movie. The big difference between this and Ghostbusters was the fact that there was a movie that was being made with the original cast at that time. It was going to be called Ghostbusters 3. And then all of a sudden, this came along. And the thing was, we found out later that it was because that movie had been hijacked and handed over to Feig and his gang to do this one. Now, I did watch the Ghostbusters movie. I did kind of like it. And like I said, there was only one character to me that was even halfway memorable, and that was Holtzman, played by Kate McKinnon. Other than that, all the rest was just temp your regular Saturday Night Live shtick. It will never stand up to the original, but it wasn't dumpster fire material either. Well, it was in some places. But. Okay, let's get off that. Let's get to the Doctor News. Here. Did you get to it already? All right, let's get to it. Let's get on to it. And away we go. Okay, first off, if you haven't got a decent copy, of, turn, turn it off, of Peter Capaldi, you know, the spotlight panel at New York Comic Con. This just went up the other day. I was watching this. Very good sound and video quality. You know, you may want to go check this out if you have not yet. So, all right, moving on. Doctor Magazine 518 is out. That's right. An exclusive interview with, uh, with sorry, it has an exclusive interview with Dad. David Tennant, and of course, Billy Piper, also Camille Kaduri is in there. Sylvester McCoy is, you know, second part of his interview, all that stuff's in there. So, bam, bam, bam. Um, they're, like I said, what they're talking about mainly is the fact that, you know, they're coming out, they're kind of updating on what they've been up to, blah, 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 since then and whatnot. And also, they are coming back, but they're coming back in big finish audio. I saw a lot of people have been saying this is clickbait. No, it is true. They are coming back to Doctor Who, but they're coming back in big finish audio. 10th Doctor Volume 2 is out sometime next month, but if you want to listen to the trailer, it's linked up right here on Radio Times. 
Um, this goes a bit into you know, it goes a little bit into the interview here. If you want to get a preview of it, wham, wham, wham. Here you go. Also, <laughs> this was a poll done by RadioTimes.com, and I just want you to get a look at these kind of polls because it kind of shows you where the bear sits sometimes. You know, at least with some of the fans, I like they're they're wanting multiple companions. Well. Yeah, kind of. That's kind of like the way they're aiming it right now. They also go into some 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 specifics. Oh yeah, fans would prefer the thirteenth Doctor's companion to be male. You know, kind of like that. And of course, yeah, they. Like I said, so it's just some interesting little things right here. But the problem is, a lot of this has already been covered. So, but it's kind of nice. You'll get a little tap on the pulse there of what's going on in the community. All right. Other than them silly little things, made, those silly little polls that are made up online, and I'm not going to there. Okay. Pearl Mackie picks up a Pink News Award for her, the show's groundbreaking. Oh, hang on. I was like, oh. groundbreaking LGBT storylines. Um, okay. One of the things I did disagree about about Bill's character why did they have to constantly remind us that she was gay? That that did get a bit annoying. It was kind of well established that Bill was gay, but you know, to constantly be reminded of it, I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking. You know, but other than that, Bill was a spectacular character. I really enjoyed it. So here you go, some beautiful shots, some beautiful, and a lovely, lovely, lovely article here. Um, so please go check this out over on Pink News. Cold box. Matt Lucas hints at a return. Now, this is what he said exactly. He said, I'm not sure my relationship with the show is over, but I can't really go into great detail about that. It remains a big part of my life. Let's put it that way. And they speculate that could it be that they're leaning towards the Nardal adventures, like big finish deal? We don't know because Alex Kingston's going on to do it. Um, as we've seen, Tenet, Billy Piper, Catherine Tate even went on to do it. So why not? You know, he seems to enjoy the character of Nardal. Um, if you want to read the full interview, just click on this, and it'll take you here over to Den of Geek. And they're talking about his book, Little Me, amongst other things. And I just finished that book today on audio. I was listening to it while I was at work over the last two days. And it's very brilliant, very brilliant autobiography, very well told. And it's really nice when you can listen – to an autobiography as told by the author, you know, themselves. So, or the, you know, it's kind of weird, you know, because it's like, gives you a little insight into how he broke into the business, you know, things that happened in his life. And what I loved about it is there were some things that were too personal and he did not go into them out of, you know, respect for the other, you know, the folks involved. And that is, you know, really, you know, really class act for me that he didn't bother dragging all that out into the public some of the private things in his life. But there was some really good stuff in there, especially about Doctor Who later on in it. You know, Little Britain, of course. Uh, you know, just shooting, you know, all that good stuff. It's really, really good. It's a really great listen. If you can pick it up on audio, I highly recommend it. Okay. Okay, and lastly to, for today, well, sorry, almost lastly, uh, Star Trek continues. Latest episode is out. Now they're like, what the hell does this have to do with Doctor Who? Uh, well, uh, it kind of has there. Oh, look, I forgot to open that window up. Ah, look, it's big me. Ah, okay. <laughs> You'll probably won't miss me anyway. But it, this is one of the last, probably the, the first of the last two episodes of Star Trek continues. And the big key thing is, this episode guest stars Nicola Bryant as a character named Lana and I or Lana. I very, Oh God, this episode kicks ass. If you're a big fan of star Trek, this is one to watch. And of course it's going to leave you hanging a bit because part two is not out yet, but you know, Nicola Bryant, I have to say brilliant performance in this episode. Very well done. And lastly, for today, Four Bears, Delia Darshire, Electronic Music's Forgotten Pioneer. Of course, she is the namesake of the vessel in the Dr. Freedom and Eric you know, Audio Adventures, which, by the way, hopefully will be out this weekend. I'm not making any promises. I've been meaning to put it out and get it done, but 
things have been getting hectic here, you know, some real life stuff that had to come in first. So as much as I'd love to have had comes the Imperator chapter one out to you, it's just not in the cards yet. Hopefully this weekend, I'm really hoping to have it done, put out, because I'm, I've already began the editing on it. I just got to throw a few more things on it. I got to finish scene two, and then hopefully it'll be done. But I really love articles that talk about Delia because she was one of the pioneers of electronic music. And a lot of people, you know, they tend to forget that. She doesn't get as much mention as she should. Okay, so once again, I highly doubt there's going to be an Easter special and or spring special as the one channel put it. And I love how everybody flocks to this channel and, you know, oh, man, I don't know where he's been. I don't know what they've been smoking. I really don't. I don't know why they keep dragging this up other than as clickbait because it's logistically not possible. <laughs> you got to remember, they're starting filming. As far as I heard, all my little birds are saying November 4th is when filming's going to begin on Series 11, which means sometime within the next week or two, read-throughs have got to happen. So we'll start hearing about that, hopefully. And also, you got that means you got 10 months from that of filming because everybody's like, oh, it's a shorter season. They can have it done faster. It's a shorter season, but it's hour-long episodes, and you have a Christmas episode due. So you, you can't just sidetrack to film one episode for Easter and then hop back on and then hope to have everything done and through post for the beginning of the fall next year. Now, a lot of people are saying, you know, late fall, but I really hope in that November th thing is hogwash because that does not make any damn sense whatsoever. That means you're going to technically have a split season across, you know, the beginning of 2018, you know, and, and you know, it's like the end of 2018 going into 2019 and that's just damn ridiculous. So hopefully I'm hoping what they'll do is they'll get the first half of the season filmed and in the can like they did this last season. And then while the, the season's airing, they'll finish filming. I doubt that's going to happen, but they should have most of it filmed even then, you know, by, you know, mid fall next year. It's just, we don't know yet. We don't have a release date. We don't have anything like that yet, but I'm hearing November 4th is when filming begins. So read throughs have got to start soon. Oh, well, that's all I got for you tonight. So take care. Tata. Have to enjoy the rest of your night. See you on the flip side, guys.